Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. Let's do an examination of the chain drive we built in a prior video so we can understand the mechanics of how it works. To start off, see if you can figure out of these two sprockets which one is my input and which one is my output. If you're saying that this one is my input, you may have noticed the handle just barely sticking out behind everything here and you would have been correct. So here we have our input or drive sprocket and here we have our output or driven sprocket. Now one of the nice things about a chain drive is that you can really have a wide variety of positions for our two sprockets because they do not have to be directly connected. The chain does that for us. Which means I can take this and go up, down, left, right, or at an angle, and it would still work the same way. But it is important to realize that in this system, our, the sprockets themselves are going to be parallel. They are not perpendicular at any other angles. They have to be parallel to each other. So now let's take a look at speed and torque. And for that, we need to understand the gear ratio. So let's start by saying that this is a 24 tooth and this is an 18 tooth sprocket. So if we examine our formula, we're going to take 18 divided by 24 to get a ratio of 3 to 4. So to show you what that means, because we're not using 1 as those numbers. No, neither one number is a 1, which is what we're used to. So now we need to look a little more closely at those rotations. So I want you to pay attention to this one. I've marked both with little pieces of yellow paper. I'm going to turn this however many times it takes to get those back into the exact same positions. I want you to count how many times this one turns. So let's go. How many times did that one rotate? If you counted four, you would be correct. In a three to four gear ratio, three turns of our input results in four turns of our output. If I were to go the other way, and I flip this over to the other side, to get them back into that position again, let's turn, this time you count that one. And in this case, you would have noticed that one turned three times, and this one turned four, which means now we have a four to three gear ratio. This also answers another question, is our flow of power reversible? Well, I put the handle on both and it worked, so yeah, it's reversible. In direction of travel, we notice that I can turn the handle either direction, so our direction of travel is reversible as well. Lastly, you'll notice that if you pay attention to these, are, do the sprockets turn in the same direction or opposite directions? In this case, we see they turn in the same direction. So that's important because if you want to build a system where the input and outputs turn in opposite directions, this system is not going to be the one you want to use. You're going to want to build some other gear system because these turn in the same direction. Okay, so we got a lot of information there. We see that the flow of power is reversible. The direction of travel is reversible. The sprockets turn in the same direction. In this case, we actually have seen an example of a gear ratio that's not using a value of 1. So now we can understand a little bit more about the rotation impact of gear ratios. We see a system where when the handle is over here, that one actually turns faster than the input, which also means the torque has decreased. And we're also seeing an example in which the um, gears or the sprockets are actually parallel with each other. Um, thank you for watching and feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with any of our other gear examinations or any other tutorial here at Myth Badger Videos.